Welcome to our lecture online. Mars is also a very interesting planet in that half of the planet, the northern half, looks extremely different from the southern half. And between them, there is a boundary which we now call the dichotomy boundary. And of course, the word dichotomy means very different, very opposite. And that's indeed the case for the two halves of Mars. The northern half looks extremely different from the southern half. And if you take a look at the top topographical map of Mars, you can see that not only do they look different, they also have a very different altitude. There's a much lower altitude associated with the northern half and a much higher mountainous altitude, except for the two huge craters there, um, or it probably impact sites, huge impact sites on the surface of Mars. The southern half has a lot higher uh, altitude and is much more related to a mountainous kind of environment. So not only do they look different visually, and also they're not different in elevation, they're also very different in composition between the northern half and the southern half. The southern half tends to be much older in nature. The northern half looks like much more changes have occurred since the beginning of the formation of Mars. So we used the Mars Global Surveyor, which mapped the entire surface of Mars between 1997 and 2006. That's almost for a full decade. And not only did we get beautiful visual pictures of the surface of Mars to great detail and great resolution, we also used uh, what we call the thermal emission spectrometer, which was able to analyze the composition of the surface on a global scale. And so what we found in the northern half, we call that the no Nokian, the early geological period of Mars, because it really essentially has not changed much compared to probably what it looked like billions of years ago. And we find that it's mostly unaltered pleo, uh, ple, uh, plagioclase and clinoparoxene ridge basalts. So what does that mean is that, well, these are basically volcanic type rocks. So you say, well, isn't that what the northern half is made up of as well? Yes, it is. But the difference is that these were formed a long time ago in very hot conditions, under a lot of pressure, and they typically contain a lot of what we call plagioclase and pyroxene and olivine. And notice that the silicates contain sod uh, sodium, calcium, and aluminum, and then pyroxene is mostly made out of calcium, magnesium, and iron, and olivine is mostly made of magnesium and iron. And it's different in that those have been around, those formations have been around for billions of years, essentially unaltered. What we find on the northern half is quite different. Yes, we also find volcanic type rocks, but there we find more what we call andesites, also basaltic andesites. So they're typically found in lava flows. So in other words, as we have active volcanic activity over the millions and billions of years, we have these huge lava flows that cover large extents of the northern half of the planet. And those were formed later, billions of years later after the formation of Mars. And so that volcanic rock is of what we call of intermediate composition, somewhere between the pure basalts that were formed many billions of years ago and rhyolite, which is basically the broken debris stuff that's on the surface of the planet. It tends to be fine-grained. The colors tend to be from light to dark gray. So you can see it, it, it looks a little bit like, um, hmm, what would you call it? Uh, well, the kind of minerals where you have a lot of speckles inside the rock. So when you open up and look on the inside. And the kind of rock formation that we find in the northern half is associated with an ancient ocean basin. In other words, these kind of formations where we have that intermediate form tends to form a lot when there's the presence of water. And we know that there was a huge amount of presence of water in the northern half of the planet. And therefore, we are associating that the kind of minerals and rocks that formed in the northern half were associated with the presence of water where the rocks and formation we find in the southern half were primarily indication that there was no water present when these rock formations happened and they tend to have happened a longer time ago. There was probably also a fair amount of erosion and with water flowing from the mountainous areas into the northern basin, what we potentially called an ocean back then, uh, you can see that, yes, the two halves of Mars had a very different geological history. And by mapping the planet using the spectrometers, we, in, we were able to indicate that, yes, there's a, quite a difference in the kind of rock formations that we find in the north half and the southern half of Mars. So it's, it's really a, what we would call a dichotomy, very different halves of 
the planet Mars, and that's why we called it the dichotomy boundary to indicate that yes, there was a big difference between the two halves of Mars, and that is what we mean by the geological history and the dichotomy of the planet Mars.